Hey everyone, Jenna with SoCo Lashes here, and today we're going to talk about what happens when a client is late. Do you still do them? Do you reschedule them? I have an answer for you. Okay, scenario. Your client walks in 17 minutes late, and you see her walk in and you're like, oh, nice to see you. I did not think you were coming. And she just walks in nonchalant and says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm just a few minutes late. And you're like, yeah, like, like 17 minutes late. I didn't think you were coming. What do you do? Okay, so here's what I do. And this has worked like a charm every single time. What I say is, okay, shoot, let's get started. And they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then what I say is, oh my God, it's your two hours. You could do whatever you want, but if you want to spend it in Starbucks, totally up to you. And then they're like, And then I'm like, let's get started. Okay, listen, I know that rules are really hard to enforce. No, they're not. Okay, but in the beginning, I know that they are. It's kind of scary. You're, you're trying to get like your two feet on the ground and you're trying to get people to respect you. So here is another option that you can say. When you very first book a client, this is what you should always tell them. Okay, so I have a 24-hour cancellation policy. I had a 48 personally, just because oftentimes you can't always fill an appointment in 24 hours. Um, tell them your policy, have them sign something, and say, hey, if you're gonna be late to your appointment, just shoot me a text, because what I'll do is I will hand make your fans before you get here. It's your time, so I want you to get your value out of the time that you're paying for. So if you're late, shoot me a text, let me know, and I'm gonna hand make fans before you get here so it doesn't come out of their appointment. See, the thing is, in this business, I think in a perfect world, we'd like to say our clients are always on time, they always show up, but people are human. I have forgotten about appointments. It happens. But as long as you're approaching this in a professional, respectful, friendly way, and you're treating your clients like humans, and you're not taking out you know, a no-show that you had yesterday on them, be mindful that they're gonna make mistakes sometimes. And as long as everybody's respectful of each other's time, it's really, really easy to fix. Make their fans beforehand, have clear communication, tell them beforehand in their first appointment what your expectations of them are and then what their expectations of you should be. This is a two-way street. A little communication goes so far. And you know, hopefully this way, you're not gonna lose out on any, any money. Um, I know I've heard some people say, they're like, oh no, I cancel appointments. Why, why would you, that comes out of your pocket. Now you're punishing yourself. I have never canceled an appointment. Even if somebody comes before I started making handmade fans and I had to, I, or rather crystallizing them, I didn't know how to make them before and put them on after, I would still give them the rest of their service. I would only give them 30 minutes and they still paid me. Um, I just think a lot of people overcomplicate this and it does not have to be complicated. As long as you treat them like people and friends, you know, it's just like, when people are afraid to get sued, people don't sue people that they like. And people also respect and take care of people they like. So as long as you guys have a really good relationship and you're treating your your clients and your customers like humans and like people, this can be a really, really wonderful long-term relationship that you guys get to keep going forever. And just remember, the respect goes both ways. If this is in fact their time slot, their 90 minutes or two hours that they're paying for, if they're late, you got to give them their time. So make those fans ahead of time and give them their two hours. Whether or not they are there, they're still paying for that time. So give them their appointment, make their fans ahead of time. If you don't know how to do that, hop onto my video where it shows you how to hand make fans before. This is crystallizing. You guys can totally hand make fans. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know what size to make. Everybody uses an 11. So just make a bunch of 11s or a bunch of 12s. Use a size that you know you're going to use. And just, you know, this might blow your mind, but I have had a client show up 45 minutes late to a 90 minute appointment. And I still got her just as full by pre-making the fans. It's going to happen. Don't get frustrated. You just have to think of like the alternative compare what you would be doing if you weren't doing this and maybe compare people you know who are making like $16 an hour, $20 an hour. At the end of the week, at the end of the day, at the end of the month, we are making substantially more than they are. And the thing is, we have way more freedom. We're our own boss. We get to be creative. It's going to happen sometimes. These things, 
they just happen. It's part of the business. And you know, when you have a client that no shows, if you have a great business, then you know, there's always something to do. If you have a no show client who, you know, is not being respectful and they completely, completely don't show up. Um, I would do this. Okay. So I've had two types of no shows before, or maybe like a, a cancellation two minutes after their appointment or five minutes after their appointment. What I do is this, Hey, Oh my gosh, I hope everything's okay. Um, here is my Venmo link or cash app or whatever, however you guys do digital payment. Um, as soon as you take care of this appointment, we can go ahead and reschedule you for the next one. I hope everything's okay. And sometimes they maybe won't respond. Um, and sometimes, for me, 90% of the time, right away they pay their appointment, or maybe it's a couple hours, but they always end up paying it because I've built a really respectful, solid base with my clients and they know like, this is how I pay my bills. And I really put a lot of work into my clients. I try and do full coverage. I give them free extra time all the time. They know the value that I put into this and how much love I put into this. And it's a really two-way respectful relationship. So if you say, get an appointment that just no call, no show, no response. This is what I do. Okay. So hopefully you work in a salon and hopefully you have a really good relationship with outside salons. What I do is if a client no shows, no respond, nothing, immediately I go into my phone and into my booking system and I put in front of their name, no show or NS, whatever is easier for you. In the notes, I'll say, no showed appointment, um, October 27th at 10 AM balance to Jenna, $125, whatever your fee is, uh, or rather not fee ch price for your appointment, whatever they owe you for the appointment. Then that is now saved in the booking system. So all of the artists that work in your salon that share your booking system, they'll all see that. So that if this client two years later tries to like pop in and come to the appointment, to, uh, come to the salon to somebody else, you know, thinking they won't know, it'll be in there and they'll say, Oh my gosh, Hey Megan, I just wanted to let you know, it does look like you have a balance to Jenna for $125. Here's her Venmo link. If you want to go ahead and pay that, I'd be happy to book you an appointment. And, um, what I think is really, really cool, which nobody would ever see this coming. If you have a good relationship with other artists, create a Facebook page, create a Facebook page that says Sonoma County Lash Artists and everybody kind of keep in contact or even a text message group chat. And you can just say, Hey, this group chat is for, um, issues or for no shows or whatever. Keep it, you know, short because then people like to comment tons of stuff. So maybe you have two separate pages. Like this is our Sonoma County no show page. This is our Sonoma County, um, lash artists like question page or something like that make them private so it's just for the artists and then you can post on there to your local surrounding neighboring artists hey um stephanie myers didn't show up i don't know stephanie myers by the way <laughs> stephanie myers didn't show up on uh, uh september 16th at 10 a.m can you guys you know change her in your um books or in your system thank you that way everybody has each other's back so when this person maybe reaches out to another artist who does work similar to you, which typically when you do a certain style, those are the artists that you kind of like surround yourself with. So when they reach out to Rebecca to get a, a set or a fill, Rebecca's going to say, Oh, Hey, Stephanie. Um, my name's Rebecca. I was just responding to you. It looks like you have a balance owed to Jenna for $125. I would love to book you as soon as you take care of that. Just go ahead and screenshot that and let me know. And I'd love to get you booked in my books. It's that easy. You know, I teach a lot about community and working with the neighboring artists. And there is always going to be that salon or this girl or a group of girls that don't want a part of it. It is what it is. What I say to that is eventually they will want to be a part of it. And eventually they're going to feel left out because all of these artists are just friends and they're getting coffee on the first Sunday of every month or whatever it is that you guys do. I think that community is a huge answer to a lot of our problems and chances are somebody's going to know this person and what if what if something happened like they're like oh my gosh that's my cousin i'm going to text her right now and have her pay you you know you never know as a self-employed person we have to have each other's backs because you know sometimes we don't have respect from people and they just no show and we're left with, you know, at the end of the year, 27 no shows in, in you know, in our first year or first couple of years, because we're new and we, we don't know what we're doing. Um, but I hope that was helpful. Um, the thing about 
you know, being tough and growing a backbone, you just have to rip the bandaid and do it. Do it kindly because we never know what's happening. You know, we never know what's going on in people's lives. Like I had this one particular client who was late and I'm really generous with being late. Like I said, I can pre-make whatever. Turns out that she had a really, really awful thing happen to her um, about a year and a half prior and had a child pass away. And she has really hard mornings. So thankfully I always give my clients grace. And you know, one day months after I started doing her lashes, she opened up to me and told me and apologized. And instantly I'm like, I am, so glad that I was not rude because the thing is we don't know what's going on in people's lives and a little bit of grace goes far and yep sometimes we're gonna get walked over sometimes we're gonna get no shows but <laughs> if we look back when we were younger I am sure that we did it too when we were younger and it's just maybe a little bit of karma I don't know but move forward don't get mad instead of getting mad remember okay I've had three no shows this week, which will happen when you're new. It actually sometimes will happen when you're, um, you know, you've been doing it a long time. Remember why you're doing this and what you're grateful for. And, you know, you could use that time to go get a coffee and pop in another salon for the girl that you really, really care about and go spend some time with her. Work on everything that you can to build your business. If you have a three hour gap, go spend time with the other girl. If you have a half a day gap, Go pop into another salon and introduce yourself. And be like, oh my gosh, we're neighbors. I work down here. Um, if anybody ever wants to do trades, like we're happy to refer back. We're busy. So if you guys want to have like a referral system, that we can refer back and forth. Totally cool. It works. I'm going to do a whole video on how to properly um, collaborate with all of your neighbors and how to refer clients out of your salon to other salons and not lose money. Um, it's a really, really cool idea. I teach this in our Lash Booth Collective um, uh, events. And if anybody's going to Lash Conference this year, we're doing a Lash Booth Collective event in the beginning of the um, weekend. will be Friday evening. It'll be opening night. And I can't wait to see everybody. We've already sold a good amount of tickets. And I just think that you know, if you guys follow Soko Lashes, you know that I'm really big on community. And I just think that if everybody can just get to this point quickly, man, life changes, your business changes, and you lose that sense of like, like you, there's always that girl that you're like, I hate her. She's so good. <laughs> she's taken four of my clients. It's probably because she's better than you. And the thing is, everybody's in the same boat. And if we just learn to like live with each other and, um, you know, collaborate and work with each other properly, it's going to be so much easier and you're going to love your job. Um, I'm also going to do another video on um, like what to do when somebody posts a video of your work that isn't good and it's obvious because I've had that happen to me and I had another lash artist reach out to me recently and the first thing I said was, oh my god, this has happened to me. Do not worry. Um, and if you guys have anything that has happened to you, DM me on Instagram. I would love to dedicate a video to you. Um, I actually have a list of dedications that I need to do, but it kind of needs to pair up with clients. Um, and I don't really lash full time anymore. So <laughs> I'm trying to get my like information business videos out of the way. But if you have um, a request or if you're having an issue, I would love to dedicate a video to you. Um, I've been in the industry for uh, I think April was, I hit my 22 year mark. So I am, uh, going into my 23rd year. I've been lashing for, I cannot for the life of me remember the date, but it's either, I, I'm a right around a decade. Um, and yeah, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. All right. If you have any questions, I hope this video was helpful. Comment them below and see you next time.